The Broken Blueprint Part 3 The Pre Medic Crisis Begins. How it started. Loma Linda's connections with the AME were a sinister cause of much trouble as the years passed. The AME accrediting agency continued to make new demands. It had become the boss and we the servants. In 1919, Elder Milton E. Kern, one of four leading educators at the time, wrote the inescapable truth. Jesus did not seek recognition from the schools of his day, and it seems clear that if Paul had a diploma from the school of Gamaliel, it did not help him materially in his work. It was his experience on the road to Damascus rather than his university work at Jerusalem, to which he reverted so frequently. As one of our early leaders once said, We have no great men, but we have a great truth. Let it be understood that the Advent message will never go forward by any prestige that men among us may have because they hold high academic degrees. The truth of God does not succeed that way. M. E. Kern, Review, April 17, 1919 Think not that our hidden masters in Chicago were done with us. Far from it. The next thing that the AMA began demanding was that our other colleges become accredited. No, they did not say it that way, but that is what is involved. At this point, a little vocabulary instruction would help. A pre-medic is a student in a college who is taking a pre-medical course so that he can then go to a medical school, such as Loma Linda, and, as a medical student, take the medical course. By 1919, the AMA began to insist that the medical college accept only accredited pre-medics for their school. At that time, pre-medics only needed 14 grades or two years of college for pre-medical training. The one new AMA requirement led to an invasion of worldliness into our church. The beginning of the end. This new requirement, which had been placed on Loma Linda, would snowball into a number of terrible results, drastically affecting our entire church. Aside from Loma Linda, our colleges did not belong to the educational associations. If any of them did, it would start locking them into servanthood to the whims and ever-increasing demands of secular accreditation agencies. If even one or two of our colleges began receiving accreditation, the other ones would begin demanding it too. Accredited colleges would require teachers with advanced degrees. Course requirements for such degrees would require the study of minutia, which were not at all necessary. Because our colleges could not issue PhDs, the students would have to take their advanced training at outside institutions of so-called higher learning, all of which would be secular, Protestant, or Catholic universities. As a result of all this attention to advanced degrees, many of our brightest students would lose their missionary zeal and switch from service for humanity to earning a doctorate from an outside university, so they too could be seen as great men and women of the world. Accrediting agencies would gain total control, not only over our libraries and teacher training, but also the secularization of our schools. Any attempt by church officials to eliminate worldly teachers would result in prompt suspension of accreditation. The future pastors, workers, and leaders of the church would take their training under men holding doctoral degrees from outside universities, who, as part of their doctoral training, had imbibed non-Adventist religious teachings, such as Antiochus Epiphanes as the little horn of Daniel 7 and 8, no sanctuary in heaven, grace without obedience, and much more. Graduates would go into local churches and leaven the beliefs of our congregations. And so it has happened. Every year the resultant apostasy deepens. But now, back to the story of how it came about.